My husband changed me, someone who used to shy away from social interactions. With him, I thought I could be truly happy. Yet, after we got married, he changed. It started with yelling, moved on to shoving, and ultimately, he kicked me while I was sick in bed. This is not the man I married. Love has turned into fear. I want to run away, but I'm scared to do that too. But I know, at the end of the day, it's on me to speak up. Let's break up. My name is Scarlett, 29 years old. I've been married to Daniel for two years and I'm a housewife. I lost my parents at a young age and the grandmother who raised me passed away when I was in high school. I was bound to be lonely forever. Since my grandmother passed, I had been uncomfortable with relationships. Simple reason, really. It hurts when people leave. That's why I never had a boyfriend or close friends. I had always been on my own. But Daniel was different. He changed all that. He took an interest in me, a rather gloomy person. I'll never know. He asked me out repeatedly. At first, I was honestly annoyed by his persistence. But eventually, I gave in and found myself caught up in his world, realizing Daniel had become the most important person to me. That's how we ended up getting married two years ago, and now I'm questioning whether I should stay married, because Daniel changed after we got married. Within a few months into our marriage, he started coming home less and less. He wouldn't even tell me what time he'd be back and started criticizing what I was doing around the house. Why isn't my dinner ready? If I told him I thought he would be late, he'd just sigh and look at me with cold eyes. You're staying home on my dime and can't even manage the housework? What a wife! And just like that, he'd grab his change of clothes and leave the house. That's when I started making dinner every day, even if he wasn't coming home. But on those days, he wouldn't come home for a week. Is he tired of me? Did he see something he didn't like after marrying me? I couldn't stop thinking about it. I don't want the sweet memories I have with Daniel to be a lie. I don't want to be abandoned. I don't want to be alone. My mind was a mess. After living like this for six months, I decided something needs to change. I don't want to be a burden on Daniel, and honestly, we're hardly a married couple in this state. When Daniel finally came home, I asked if he was considering a divorce. To my surprise, he looked shocked. That's not it, Scarlet. I've been busy with work. I'm sorry for being cold lately. Please don't talk like that. In a moment of panic, Daniel hugged me, the first time in months. Suddenly, I felt guilty for not considering how busy he was with work. But if he doesn't communicate, I can't understand his struggles. I asked him to keep me in the loop moving forward, to talk to me when something's up. Of course, I promise. Seeing Daniel's smile made me feel relief for the first time in a while. For a moment, our troubles seemed like a lie, and life returned to normal. Even though there are still days Daniel doesn't come home, he keeps me updated. Just that alone started to make me happy again. However, one year after we got married, it was the day of our wedding anniversary. Daniel stood me up and never showed at the restaurant we had reserved. I was heartbroken, especially since it was our wedding anniversary and I had never thought he'd cancel. Of course, it was because of work. I tried to be understanding since it was work-related, but it still hurt. I wish you would have told me sooner. When Daniel came back the day after our anniversary and I told him that, he glared at me. Why would you say something like that? Don't you see how hard I'm working? I do appreciate that he works hard, but I wanted him to prioritize our anniversary. When I expressed this, Daniel knocked the food off the table, shattering the dish. The sound echoed in the room. You're so selfish! Are you sure you're not just after my money? Daniel's mom, Olivia, who's my mother-in-law, founded her own company. Daniel and his brother work there. So many have pegged Daniel as the future CEO, and he had warned me that gold diggers had targeted him before. The only one who really loves me is Scarlet, he once happily told me. And honestly, I've never once thought about his family wealth. When I told him this, Daniel looked at me with eyes full of disbelief. Then get a job. 
You've got too much free time if you're complaining about me. You'd do it if you really loved me, right? Would a job solve this issue? I hesitated, but ultimately nodded. I didn't want Daniel to think I was with him for the money. And more than anything, I didn't want him to leave me. I started to question my sanity. I had come to think that Daniel's anger was a result of something I did. So, I found a full-time job. If I tidied up before and after work, Daniel wouldn't complain. Then, one day, Olivia contacted me. Scarlet, I heard you're working now. What happened? Weren't you planning to quit after getting married? I responded with a forced smile, saying I had time to spare. Olivia has always been kind to me from the moment we met. She's a busy CEO, but checks in on me. I vividly remember the time we went shopping right after the wedding. She looked at me like a dream had come true. Daniel used to have a sister, who tragically passed away. Maybe that's why Olivia is extra kind to me. Reach out if you're ever in trouble. Her kind words nearly brought tears to my eyes. I never knew my parents, but I wonder if this is how it feel to have a mother. Thinking about it warms my heart a little. I don't want to cause any trouble for Olivia. Supporting her son, Daniel, is my role after all. But that's easier said than done, especially when Daniel doesn't come home. Ever since I started working, there's no longer any money being handed over to me. I mean, we're getting by, but is this really okay? I find myself troubled by the same thoughts over and over. Nothing has changed since back then. Maybe something needs to change. Just when I was thinking this, Daniel came home after a long time. Did you say anything to mom? I tell Daniel about the call I got. He seemed angry at first, but smiled in relief when he found out I hadn't said anything to Olivia. That's my wife. Make sure to tell mom we're getting along just fine, okay? I ask Daniel if we're really doing as well as he thinks. I can focus on my job as the future CEO because you handle things so well, Scarlet. Once you're the CEO's wife, I'll treat you to a lavish life. Hearing Daniel so satisfied with that, my heart sinks. I never wanted to be a CEO's wife. I just wanted to build a happy home with you, Daniel. That was enough for me. As I say this, I feel a sharp pain on my cheek. Daniel slapped me. How dare you say that? When I'm working so hard, I married you, so just listen to me. This isn't the Daniel I knew. Tears start to flow. Even my crying seemed to anger him more. Wake me up when dinner's ready, he said, and stormed off to the bedroom. I made dinner while crying that night and ate a tasteless meal in silence with Daniel. Things went downhill from there. Daniel started coming home more often. Perhaps Olivia said something, but he was cold as ice to me. I've thought about leaving him, but would he agree to a divorce? I didn't know. And what if he hits me again? Ever since that day, Daniel would poke or lightly kick me. I find myself flinching whenever he raises his voice or hand. He even made me quit my job, even though it was his idea for me to work in the first place. Was it just to torment me? I have no idea what Daniel wants from me. My sole focus every day is not to get yelled at by Daniel. Amidst all this, Daniel invited me to Olivia's birthday party. There'll be a lot of people there, so don't embarrass me. Get your hair done on the day and wear something appropriate. Despite the rough times, I was looking forward to a break. Seeing Olivia will be my strength to get through the days, but my luck ran out and I came down with a high fever on the day of Olivia's birthday. I have a fever of 103, and it might even go up. I can't go to the in-laws' house, I tell Daniel. As expected, Daniel yells at me. How could you get sick at a time like this? You're useless! I apologize over and over, but Daniel kicks me repeatedly through the comforter. I'm going ahead. Get ready and come to my parents' house. Despite my high fever, Daniel insists that I should come. I can't go like this. Ignoring my soft murmur, Daniel just leaves the house. If I don't go, who knows what he'll do to me next. Desperate, I put on makeup, fix my hair, and get ready. But every move is slow, and my foggy head just takes too much time. 
Before I know it, over an hour has passed since Daniel left the house. Daniel calls to rush me, annoyed that I haven't arrived. Get it together! Come to the celebration now! Are you trying to embarrass me? I quickly call a taxi and arrive at the in-laws' house. This should prevent more scolding. But when I get there, the relatives and guests look at me with disbelief. Scarlet, what are you wearing? Even Olivia who notices me looked puzzled. I catch my reflection in a large, full-length mirror in the in-laws' house. My makeup and hair are a mess. The word disheveled would be an understatement for how I look right now. I apologize to Olivia, who is giving me a cold stare, and she sighs in disbelief. Scarlet, you should break up with Daniel. To which Daniel chimes in cheerfully. Come on, Mom! Give her a break! She just overslept. She didn't even remember it was your birthday. I bow my head at his unhelpful comment. Then a loud slap resonates. I look up to see Olivia has slapped Daniel. What? Why? With a face of disbelief, Daniel stares at Olivia. Daniel, did you force Scarlet to come even though she's clearly unwell? Is that how a person should act? Daniel tries to argue back, but gets slapped on the other cheek before he can speak. I have evidence that you're having an affair. Shall we talk about it? Olivia takes Daniel into the study. I'm led to the guest room by my brother-in-law, Andrew, and rest there. Whether it's the medicine kicking in or exhaustion, I drift into a deep sleep. When I wake up, it's nighttime. Daniel sits in submission and Olivia looks exasperated in the living room. Olivia quickly fills me in on what happened. Apparently, Daniel had been dating someone even before we got married and he had plans to marry her. Turns out, Daniel's ex had a kleptomania issue. She even stole from Olivia when she visited their home. Naturally, Olivia banned her from the house and made it clear that they wouldn't support Daniel if he married her. That's why Daniel chose me as his cover-up. He thought I looked like his late sister and that Olivia would like me. If Olivia approved of me, he figured he would also be in her good graces. Olivia didn't say more, but I think Daniel also saw my docile nature as easy to manipulate. Daniel planned to break up with you after he became the CEO. I've only met Scarlett a few times a year, but she seemed less lively each time. That's why I investigated my son and Scarlett. I'm really sorry about Daniel. With that, everything made sense. Daniel never loved me from the start. Surprisingly, I felt more relieved than sad because I'd already been thinking I should leave. Love had turned into fear after all the shouting and physical abuse. Olivia, I'm leaving him. Olivia nodded. Daniel, you better pay the alimony properly in court. Sign these divorce papers and this pledge, she demanded. Quit my job? And $50,000 in alimony? Are you kidding? Daniel was in disbelief. As I was trying to wrap my head around the fact that I might lose my job, Daniel turned to me for help. I really loved you, Scarlet. I was just meeting my ex because she's relentless. I didn't know what she'd do if I didn't. Trust me. He pleaded through tears but his tears weren't for me. I still have the bruise you gave me this morning. I could easily get a medical report and file charges. Sign the papers if you don't want to be sued. I warned him. Olivia, unaware of the physical abuse, burst into tears and started hitting Daniel. You're a terrible person! Don't ever come back home. We're done! She yelled. Afterward, brother-in-law Andrew stepped in. Daniel signed the papers, crying. If he regretted it so much, he shouldn't have done it in the first place, I thought. Maybe I also had a part in this for putting up with it for so long. Watching Daniel cry, I vowed never to neglect my feelings again. After the divorce, I focused on moving and job hunting. It was a hectic time. But Andrew helped with finding a new place, and Olivia even referred me to a job. I was being pampered, really. I managed to find a job in the same field as before and recently got the offer. Of course, I was hired on merit after a proper interview, not because of connections. But ever since, Olivia has been a bit overprotective of me, which worries me a little. 
Starting a new job while adjusting to a new lifestyle is bound to be challenging for a while. Still, right now, I feel more satisfied and secure than anxious. About a year after my divorce, I happened to run into my ex-husband Daniel loitering near my workplace. I just wanted to talk. He looked awful. His clothes were dirty and he lacked the energy he once had. Long story short, he'd been dumped by his girlfriend and wanted to get back together with me. I couldn't help but laugh. I then showed Daniel my hand. On my right ring finger was a new ring I just received. I've been dating your brother recently? Not sure about marriage yet, but I do know he's a much better person than you. Plus, he's next in line to be CEO. Daniel had always arrogantly assumed that he, as the eldest son, would take over the family business, but Olivia never considered the irresponsible Daniel as a successor. Being married to you was a struggle, but there's one thing I'm grateful for. Thank you for introducing me to your family. I'm cherished here now. With a smile, I conveyed this to him. Daniel collapsed on the spot. He fell to his knees, sobbing. That was the moment I felt truly glad to have left him. While I still can't contemplate marriage due to my history with Daniel, I've decided to once again trust those who supported me during my toughest times. From now on, I'll live being true to my feelings.